Welcome back to Inside Politics. Today we're talking 2016 presidential politics. We have Larry Woods, Nashville attorney and Democratic strategist. Along with him is uh, Bill Phillips, who's a Republican strategist, helped run the 1988 Republican National Convention. So we talked a little bit about Jeb Bush as well in the first day. Why has his campaign done so poorly, Bill? Well, I think the one thing is that they started off assuming some things that didn't come together. They thought that they would be in the lead and maintain it. Donald Trump certainly is the Trump card in this whole thing. Did Bush not catch fire because there is Bush fatigue out there because there have been two other Bush presidencies and they sort of leave maybe a little bit of drag on some of that? I mean, there's some lift, too, in the Republican Party in particular. Yeah, and it's very hard for me to be objective when we talk about the Bush family. However, uh, I think there there is some Bush fatigue and H.W. Uh, Bush was the first that I heard say that uh, before all this started. Also, uh, Jeb is methodical, he's uh, cerebral, he talks about the issues, he's very smart, and he's not very sexy on TV. That's boring, huh? Uh, yeah, that's a good word for it. <laughs> and unfortunately, and that's unfortunate for politics for both parties, yeah. the solid, steady, research, fact-oriented candidates generally don't come across as flashy or sexy or whatever you are, or charismatic and suffer. Larry, another issue that may have come up or think that happened in this race that perhaps the Bush camp didn't necessarily think of is Mario, Marco Rubio has gotten in as well. And they used to be mentor and protege. That relationship is getting frayed. Uh, but that is also, I think, undercutting Bush, particularly if he wants to be the moderate choice, maybe along with Kasich. I think that's right. Now, if Rubio starts moving further to the right uh, to offset Trump, to offset Carson, then that's going to create some room for sp some space for Jeb Bush. But the Florida primary will be a tell-all here. Uh, you know, it seems to me a lot of voters in the Republican Party, if Bush loses Florida to Rubio, then they're going to start thinking, well, maybe Rubio's the guy we need to be behind. Now we'll talk about the Tennessee primary, which is on that same day, March right. 1st. But, Bill, is, is, is the Florida primary going to be a, one of them's out after it's over? Either Bush is going to be out or Rubio's going to be out? I think what we're going to see is a very subtle Bush machine effort to uh, put Rubio in his place. Loyalty is the strongest element of the Bush machine, and he has broken it. Well, Bill, uh, in that regard to the, the Bush family, there was a recent article in the New York Times that uh, George Herbert Walker Bush was was interviewed, and he he seems to be he uh, seems to be consumed with this particular race, which we'd understand since yeah. his son is running. But he also seems to be quite frustrated about it. I think he told he was quoted in the article as saying, "I guess I picked a good time to be old." <laughs> as somebody who was one of his people from back in the days. Are, are you frustrated as well? Do you, do you sort of oh. wonder about the Republican Party? Is this the Republican Party that you used to be a part of? Oh, absolutely. Uh, frustration is there. Uh, I, I was telling Larry that I see that the establishment is getting quite concerned, and I guess that means I'm a part of the establishment <laughs> and you're because it's not going the way it's always gone before, which isn't necessarily bad, but we, we need this country needs true leadership and we need to focus in on what it is that we're choosing here. We're choosing a leader uh, for uh, the United States of America, and we've got some people that are just really short on that quality. Larry, we'll get to the race in your party in a little bit, a little bit later in the show, but more and more the Republicans are getting more and more dominant in the state houses, the governor's chairs. They control both the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate. It looks like the only place the Democrats have a shot at in 2016 is to hold the presidency, but aren't you worried how you're going to be able to continue to do that when there's such dominance by the Republicans in all the other areas of the government? I worry about it a lot, and, and you're correct. Republicans have had a, a really triumphant march in terms of state legislatures, governorships, etc. That's going to continue for some time, I think. But the presidential elections every four years, as we all know, are different. You get a different voter turnout, much higher, and a lot more Democratic voters turn out because Bill's Republicans, darn it, are better at turning out voters every two years in elections. Every four years, my guys can turn out a lot of votes. So, yeah, I think we're going to see a country for the next generation, maybe, 
where the Democrats tend to win the presidential elections and where the Republicans tend to win the off-year elections. Bill, isn't part of the problem also in the Electoral College? I mean, for the last several cycles, the Democrats have had basically a lock on getting California and New York, two of the larger electoral mm -hmm. states. That almost makes it mandatory that the Republicans have to carry the other large states like Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Yeah, you always start out assuming exactly what you said, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you start grabbing the smaller states so you can pad for those the larger ones. Uh, and Tennessee is a great example uh, mm -hmm. in that Al Gore would have been president if Tennessee had gone the other way. Right. Um, there's a couple other candidates that have sort of had a little a moment in the spotlight. Early on, it was Chris Christie. Uh, he he was a he, but that seemed to fade for him pretty quickly. Did he pretty well get knocked out by the by the scandal in his own state about Bridgegate? It it hurt him, no question about it. But I had to say at the junior varsity debate mm -hmm. the other night when Christie's the, un, the undercard, if it was yeah, a the undercard, uh, <laughs> the Christie, kids' table is what I've heard it called. Yes, <laughs> yeah, even worse. Yes, that's right. Christie had the right strategy. Every answer, yep. almost every answer, he was pounding on Hillary Clinton. In other words, he was sending a clear signal to the Republican Party, if you want somebody who can beat Hillary Clinton, I'm your guy. And he was avoiding making enemies of the other Republicans in, on either stage. And it's a message that for the anti-Obama part of the Republican Party that's very appealing. So Christie's doing the right thing. His numbers are just too low, but New Hampshire's a small state where Could with a limited budget. he become the regional budget, candidate up there that he might, that might be his re comeback resurrection? And if he finishes first, second, maybe even third in New Hampshire, that revives him to move to the Southern primaries. Bill, during that most recent Republican debate, I also heard the Federal Reserve taking a lot of heat from Republicans and a lot of other populist things about, you know, banks are too big and stuff like that. That didn't sound like a Republican debate, at least the ones I've heard in the past. Well, we've got this populist wave going through the Republican Party, and it'll be interesting to see in 2017 how populist the Republicans are going to be after the election. Let's take a break. We're talking with Larry Woods, Democratic strategist, and Bill Phillips, Republican strategist, about the 2016 presidential election. Back to continue our conversation with him, and yes, we will be talking about the Democrats a little bit more in this last segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back.